So this is going to be what I'm calling a task cast. Yeah. I have a bunch of old Prince August figures that were, that I picked up. And basically the figures were in with the original foam, which is just disintegrated. But I love the figures. These were the first miniatures I ever really owned. So what I'm going to try and do is get the figures out, <coughs> clean them off, and have the figures and probably some of the cardboard with the original stuff. But before I did that, I wanted to show you this. My um, boss at work used to play orcs in the early 90s, and he was going through a drawer and found this splendid thing, which he brought in and gave to me today, which just makes the job worth doing. <laughs> anyway, so I wanted to share this. This is a, uh, I guess, circa, well, let, what does it say now? Now with pewter. Anyway, so I just wanted to put that in the task cast. So the aim with this is to take the plastic off if it's possible, if that'll actually remove. The glue is really solid. The glue is impressively solid. The rest of this is not solid at all. So what I was thinking was perhaps getting a knife, and I've got the, my favourite knife, if you'll excuse me, just walking around the camera, I had a razor blade somewhere too, will this be enough? So the aim, let's see if I can get this splendid thing, back when I used to do Monty's reviews, it's too big, <laughs> it's too big for the camera, so back when I used to do Monty's reviews, this was quite the impressive blade. Anyway, so the aim is to just cut out these these figures and rescue them from this horrible thing. The glue is still really firm with regards to plastic. Yeah, I don't think I can shift the glue. But uh, let's see if I can get in there somehow. And the aim would be to actually save the boxes as well if I could. There we go. Ah. <laughs> as anticipated. As anticipated. Okay. Well, this is a ghoul. And I think they need some cleaning up. I've got some alcohol. Which I can put them in an alcohol bath. And hopefully clean them up. I've got a bit of handkerchief. And I think I had a, had a tissue somewhere. Or a Kleenex. Or a um, hanky. More importantly, the cloth now has completely disappeared. Here it is. Uh, so, I don't know what we do with this stuff. But this is actually sticky. So this is a ghoul. My aim is to keep... Oh, keep what I can of the card. But unfortunately, the, um, the stuff has actually impregnated the paper. And it's not particularly nice. Let's see if I can... Remove some of that. Okay. Well, here's a ghoul. Let's try to minimise all this fluff. But yeah, they're all in the state. So here's a goblin. There we go. So that's the move. Squeeze and twist. And then pull out. And get... Oh, they're just absolutely encased in this horrible stuff. Ah. <sighs> So this is what I'm calling a task cast. Okay, let me find some place where I can put the garbage. Not in a Goblin Gaming bag. Uh, you know, Ike's, no. This, I did a road trip with my wife a couple of years ago. Went to the Eisenhower Library. But no, not that. I guess I'm just putting it on the table for now. Hey. So here's a goblin coming this horrible stuff. Here's an armoured orc. Again, let's see if I can. Oh, that's the technique. Removing it, getting the horrible ugh, stuff off, and just getting these miniatures out. Yep, so they're going to have to be rinsed in something. Oh. <clears throat> so 
So what's news? A Neanderthal. Interesting. What's news? Um, no, not really. I had some uh, correspondence associated with anchor casts, and I think I've just come to the conclusion that they're not for me. Yeah. Look at this guy. <laughs> I really like the um, Prince August fantasy range. These are all Prince August miniatures, I said at the bottom. Because they also had... Here's another goblin. They also had... Um, what's the term? Uh, oh, cast your own. So I actually have some Prince August casting things. Not for these goblins, though. Look at this. I think I've got a few of them. <laughs> so I found these on uh, eBay. Here's an orc. I think I have some of the orc... Um, Orc casting things. Found these on eBay. Yeah, I think I've actually got this very one. To straighten or not to straighten? Not right now, I think. Let us wait. Let us see if I can straighten it. Yeah, I'm going to have to find some alcohol. I think I've got this very one. In casting. Okay. Let me see how many of these things. There should be uh, 34 of them. So I should get better conversation going with this other stuff. This is a, another Neanderthal. Uh, I'm not sure if he's friend or foe, but he's, he's definitely there. Okay. Um, yeah, so it, I think it, I've been doing podcasts for, well, since 2006. So I have a very particular view associated with this thing, having done a number of them. Um, as I'm doing a task, I might as well list out all the podcasts I've either been in or recorded or what have you. Um, the first podcast I recorded was called Barbalo's Log, and I maybe did three or four podcasts that. I did a podcast called Biota, which I restarted, actually, this year. Uh, Biota went on for... Um, many years, uh, from, well, 2006, solidly, through to about, which one is this? This is a, a right, a wrath, a wrath. Let's get the sword right. Oh, gosh, it's hard to establish where the sword is coming from right. Okay, so that's the hand. I'm assuming that's the sword. These old miniatures. This uh, stuff is really toxic. <laughs> Disintegrated, uh, horrible black stuff. Oy, this, this is another wrath. Again, the horrible black stuff. So, we were talking about podcasts I've done. Um, Barbalo's Log, Biota, a podcast called Late Reality that I will also be restarting in the new year, which is about my simulation. I did a podcast called uh, The Best Damn Podcast Ever, where I did the audio editing and I appeared on some of the recordings. I did a variety of different guest spots on podcasts through this time. Um, about this time, I had a podcast called Stone Ape as well, uh, 2010 through to 2016, actually the election 2016. That's what caused the end of that one. And um, oh, what, else, what other podcasts did I do through that period of time? I did a podcast called the CDF, CWF Gamecast, which I think is called something else now. Uh, and that was, um, I don't know, I was on that for maybe five months, four months, three months, something like that. Um, that's the podcast where I did, this is a classic one, I think I've got the, um, I've got the, uh, whatchamacallit for that too. I've got the um, mould for that one as well. Uh, CWF Gamecast, what else did I do? Uh, Model Rail Radio, which is my longest standing, best loved podcast. Um, what one was this? Oh, God, you don't even get this stuff out. Ghoul, okay. Another ghoul with another bent sword. No, no, different sword. Configuration, there we go. Yeah, I'm going to have to wash these out. Um, what did I say? Model Rail Radio... Um, after Stone Ape ended, I did 
many podcasts. Well, I had a podcast called Short Funk for a period of time, and now I have a podcast called Long Funk. And then uh, I did a podcast called This Comes Next with Jay Kimona. And I did a podcast called Attic Aficionados with one of the guys from Chackass, um, which was a very curious podcast. This was a podcast where I organised a road trip to go and meet the guy in Pennsylvania. So my wife and I went across the US, ended up in Pennsylvania. I don't think I'm going to keep all these bits of cardboard. I think they just... Ugh, the whole thing is so toxic. Um, yeah, and then he decided he didn't want to record the podcast anymore. So I then uh, did a podcast, the same podcast, Static Fish and Others, with a fellow called Connor Sites Bowen. Uh, we did that for maybe, I don't know, eight more episodes. Uh, Connor ended up doing his own podcast, which was nice. Um, this is an armoured orc. Doesn't look very well armoured, but he is. Let's see if I'm trying to get as little as toxic crud everywhere. Yeah, these are all going to have to be washed. Um, thankfully, I've got large bottles of alcohol. <laughs> so I'll just put them in a tray and wash them with alcohol, and hopefully this thing will just come off. This is the right king. Again, apparently, um, so what podcasts have done recently? Obviously, well, my rules are better. I mean, you know, that's a, a recent podcast. I'm trying to think of any other podcasts I've done that I haven't listed here. Um, I think that's about it. So if you count up all those podcasts, <laughs> they're all the podcasts I've done. Oh my goodness, this is quite a... Uh, Quite a job. So yes, anyway, having done all these podcasts, and at various stages I've seen various problems. I mean, the CWF Gamecast, basically, I would have continued to do a gaming podcast. So I did a review on that one that was not particularly well liked by the sponsor. It's a hooded thief. This is a new one. And uh, that was basically the end of that. So... I did a review of a Osprey game at the time, which I didn't think was particularly compatible with anything, and uh, had very strange rules for enemies. So, gosh, he's a big figure. Um, and yeah, I just said that I thought this rule set wasn't fully baked, basically. Anyway, that got me kicked off that show. Well, I don't know how one would describe it. I don't know. Uh, one could say I left of my own wishes, but really... The whole thing was just really toxic. Um, and the sponsor fellow is still active in games magazines, although his games magazine failed dismally. Um, so, yeah, he's still a character. Uh, and my understanding is the other participants might still be doing something similar, I'm not sure. Um, but, yeah, that's the podcast I've participated in. So, in terms of this form, in terms of getting out episodic audio and this kind of stuff, I feel relatively passionately about, um, you know, the, the format that I've adopted, basically, over many years. Um, and I've seen a lot of companies, a lot of individuals, uh, come and go. And I think the whole, you know, I don't know, I mean, podcasts have never been properly mainstreamized. You've got, what, Gimlet and... Um, this American Life and what have you has done in the US uh, but practically I just don't think it's ever really been properly mainstreamized um, and certainly it hasn't in the UK uh, and then you have all these you know different services that provide uh, proprietary or some thing that looks like a podcast from the external observer but doesn't adhere to the underlying specs and format and you can get that well if you've ever used YouTube for any length of time, YouTube used to be a without advertising service and then they started adding ads, uh, which they could because they'd reached a size where they could add ads. Um, and my view is that you set yourself up in these circumstances, if you have a proprietary format, for them just changing the terms of service on you. And, you know, you've recorded however many. So there's a company called Lipson that actually was the original bait and switch podcasting a company because they've done that for years. They've set people up with very basic accounts and then as soon as the show's gotten any kind of interest, they've immediately ramped up their prices. In fact, 
ironically one of the podcasts that I was working with, one of the gaming casts that I was working with had exactly this problem. And I said to, I mean, I've always been a strong advocate for following the minimal cost and kind of, you know, maximum, um, I don't know, audience, basically. So don't pay a lot of money up front. Oh, this is a hobgoblin. This is a new one. Let me move some of this stuff back. So I've been pretty strong in my advocacy associated with podcasts behaving in a particular fashion. Um, oh my goodness, I'm so looking forward to washing these in alcohol, getting them out of this stuff. I probably, if I was a decent human being, I would probably um, use wear gloves when I applied the alcohol. Oh my goodness, I don't even know what this is. This is a troll, I think. It's got TR1 on it. So I think it's Troll 1. Yeah. Put pride of place on this one. So, whoa, he's a big one. He's a big one. Let's put them right up front. So anyway, yes, I, I don't have any particular views with regards to this creative form, but it's from years of doing it. <laughs> yeah, I don't come to this thing with... Uh, and of the podcast I've done... Um, Stone Ape was relatively successful. Stone Ape was a weekly podcast. So if you put out a weekly podcast, you know, you know, you've got to do a bunch of things. You can have a bunch of topics and get everything, um, you know, ready up front. And that was with another gentleman called Heron Stone. Um, but yeah, through the election, he uh, became, I guess, somewhat jaded. I mean, there were a series of factors that led into it. It wasn't just the election. It was another Armador. Um, God, this stuff is just so toxic. I'm looking forward to getting this off all these figures. So how many figures have I got left? A few. Not a lot, a few. Countable number. Four. Oh, I don't want to hit the dust. Let's pick that one up. Four, five, six. So you've got six more of these and then I'll do the alcohol bath stuff. But yeah, this is quite a quite a set. So I paid, I think, forty dollars for these, which I thought for old Prince August figures, no one's going to care about Prince August like I care about Prince August. So here's another troll. Gosh, I've got two of the trolls, and I don't know what I do with these aside from clean them up and put them in a figure case, and maybe sometime in the future send them to someone to give them a little bit of existential respect. So the more existed to respect than staying out in these horrible foam things for an eternity. Um, so yes, that's my podcasting history, a pot of podcasting history. And I think the main thing that I've done with podcasts is just bring together communities, which I think is um, is another armored walk. A bunch of crud on him. So a lot of this stuff comes from my open source development associated with building communities. And I think that's a very important kind of backbone um, associated with all my development. But I have a strong notion of free, easily accessible, uh, wherever possible, adhering to some kinds of standards or at least agreed upon um, you know behaviours, plurality, that's the term I'm looking for. So I can go through uh, and just about finding the others basically, which is a common theme. So I did participate in a few other podcasts, um, but yeah, I don't know, I think I, I don't think necessarily, well, I mean, I think some people might think that I was prickly. <laughs> In some respect, there's another rough kid. Um, but yeah, I just, you know, if I see behavior that I'm not particularly a fan of, I mean, for example, this, uh, this other podcast, the Wargaming podcast I participated in 10 odd years ago. Um, yeah, I, I don't stick around. <laughs> Life is too short. Okay, so we've now got a bunch of these, all disgusting. And what we need to do is apply some alcohol. Now, I'm trying to think what container I would put this stuff in. I've got a bunch of different 
containers. I don't particularly want to use glass. I'd much rather use an open plastic container. Now, I had some open plastic containers somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. Let me get the open ethanol. Oh, this is just half a thing of ethanol. Will this be enough? Possibly. So I probably should do it in a... Um... Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't want to use a glass jar. I really don't want to use a glass jar. What do I have that's like a glass jar? Welcome to the excitement of task casts. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Hmm. <laughs> well, all the plastic containers have stuff in them. Which is kind of boring. That's probably too big. Hmm. Got one plastic container that might work, but it's currently back. Okay, give me a second here. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so this is a shallow plastic container. This blend will do knock everything over. Oh. Okay, only one thing. <laughs> Welcome to my podcasting room in audio form. Okay. Okay, so a plastic container. I have some ethanol. Let me move these pretties. It's kind of a larger plastic container. Um no no no. Put these little dudes in here. Um, and my hope is that the ethanol will inhibit this horrible sticky stuff and get it off. And hopefully it won't create a huge mess, which is maybe a very vain hope here. Uh, and if the ethanol is good, I might even use a little bit of ethanol on a piece of tissue or something to clean up the card, although I will only need a small subset of the cards because many of these things are duplicates. Oh my goodness, this stuff is just horrible. And if ethanol is not the solvent of choice here, then um, I don't know what I'll do. <laughs> okay, so I've moved enough of them around that I can move this, gosh, these things are horrible, this plastic thing back. I might just get two bottles of ethanol here, which would have been better if I'd used probably a jar, but I really don't want to um, knock the figures because I think they've had a, a rough life as it is. So I've got a huge, well, not a huge plastic container, but a plastic container here. So I'm going to rotate the camera around. Put all the figures in. Then I've got, okay, this is going to be very smelly. Oh, yes, extremely smelly. Let's see if this will rinse it off. Oh, it's working perfectly. It is working perfectly. That is exactly what we wanted. Okay, they're having a nice bath and it's knocking all the crud off. Oh, this is perfect. Absolutely perfect. So let's just wash the crud off. Let's put all the figures over into it. Yeah, it's literally just falling off. Like soot coming off, which is exactly what I wanted. Okay, the question is, do I leave these in here for a while? Do I add more ethanol? Well, just for sheer fun factor, I think I might add more ethanol. Because I've got another couple of um, bottles of it. And I don't really... I use ethanol and Dettol um, to strip miniatures. I use Dettol for the main active part, and then ethanol to um, denature the Dettol, for want of a better term. So this is wonderful stuff. This is really taking it all off. And I think the ethanol will not cause any nasty reaction with the lead, but it is actually knocking the crud off perfectly. Absolutely perfectly. So let me grab another bottle of ethanol. <laughs> and the other benefit of ethanol when cleaning miniatures is if you do, um, you know, if you are doing... Uh, 
paint removal. Um, once you've applied the ethanol to miniatures, and I've got some really old goblins that have been in ethanol for six months, um, but once you do it, it completely removes the dead hole smell, uh, which is a problem with a lot of miniatures that I buy, um, particularly from the UK, is that they just... Uh... So let me add ethanol in like this. So when I first started um, working for money, I worked in a research facility, a physics institution, in my hometown of Canberra, Australia. And my first, one of my first jobs was writing programs for the ethanol baths. They had these big baths of ethanol that they ran their equipment through because you can get ethanol down to very cold temperatures and you can control it a lot better than, say, with water. Look at this thing with it. Huge. Anyway, um, so, yes, I, uh, I ran the alcohol baths. Now, you can probably see the stuff actually falling off quite neatly. I wish it would fall off more. <laughs> but I think I'm just going to leave them here uh, in this stuff for a bit of time to see if it just knocks off the remaining crud. I'm not sure if there's a kind of chemical component to it and also a um, kind of static electric component to it as well. Uh, but what I'm going to do is leave these figures in the ethanol uh, for a bit of time. Put the lid on. So I gas my room out, although I'll probably gas the room out anyway. A partially filled ethanol bottle. And I'm going to call that a, uh, a video. So welcome to the Task Cast video series of uh, My Rules Are Better.